Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be about how I manage our household budget. Um, this isn't going to be a video where I'm going to tell you how much to spend on what it's going to be or how much I spend on what, but more so how I keep organized with my bill paying and how to, I, how I make sure that I always have the right amount of money for the bills that come in um, and sort of my tips and tricks for that kind of thing. So if you're interested, keep watching and we'll get straight into it. My first tip is record keeping. This is basically so that you know what bills are due when, so you're not caught off guard when a bill comes in that you weren't expecting. So what I did a few years ago, I think it must have been, it was 2013, was I went I went through all the bills that our family incurs, all the bills that come in, um, and I figured out whereabouts in the year they did come in, how often they came in, um, and roughly what they were going to be costing budget-wise. So this, I actually, this is what actually sparked me to do this video. Um, I found my notepad where I was actually doing that exact thing um, way back when. Um, so basically what I did was I put the each of the months down the side here and then I put I went through all the bills that I had. I went through my statements, I went through my um, I do I used to keep my paper bills all the time. So I went through everything, worked out what came in at can you see it? What came in during the month. This is again from 2013 so there's a lot it's a lot different to what it is now. But this is where it started at. Um, so I wrote down everything and then what I did was I made up a calendar kind of thing on I think it was on word in word and again put the months put down how each bill that came in and then that way I had a template so every month I could look at it see what was due tick it off if I had paid it or you know obviously I would say that I hadn't paid it off and I could make inquiries if I hadn't received a bill um, and then as I paid them I would write down the amount um, the reference number from my e-banking or however I was paying it and the date that I paid it so if I did ever need to go back and check something I could so the first few years that Joe and I had moved out of home I didn't have anything like this I was just sort of paying bills as they came in a couple of times I didn't receive a bill in the mail and didn't obviously pay it and then got a reminder notice from that company saying that where was my bill so that's when I brought this this in and um, it kept me really really organized especially for the first few years that I was doing it it also helped with the budget so that I knew sort of how much each bill was going to be roughly depending on usage and that kind of thing um, so I find that really really helpful I did used to file away all my bills in big A4 lever arch files um, just that I had a record of them I don't do that anymore so much there's a couple that I still do it for but I don't need to do it anymore. You can create online accounts for pretty much every utility that you have, every bill that you have, so you can always go back in and see the history of your bills that you've been paying. Um, but if you want to file bills, I would definitely recommend doing it because it can be really helpful, especially if you're a very visual person that needs to see something to sort of know what's going on, which I am that way. But at the same time, if you don't want that paper clutter in your house or you don't have the room or the space to do it, then you can always track it online. I would recommend also, if you are going to be doing it online and you're receiving email bills, is have a folder in your inbox or in your mailbox that um, you can put your bills into so you can organize them and get to them easily. Okay, my second tip is to get organized. This is the thing that pretty much saved my life budget-wise. I am the kind of person that if I see a large amount of money sitting in my bank account, I think, oh, I can spend that and I'll go shopping, which is not a good idea when you have bills that come in all the time. I work in a bank, so this was really, really easy for me. I just sort of did it in my lunch break at work. But um, if you want to do something like this, you're probably going to need to set aside a little bit of time to be able to do it. But basically what I did was open up a whole bunch of accounts. And then I allocate each account to a specific utility or bill type. And the money that's in that account is for paying that particular bill. So for example, I have an electricity account, I have a water rates account, I have a shire rates account, um, I have a car account, medical account, um, what else? A petrol account and I have a, a fixed amount direct debit account. So we both get paid fortnightly but we have money coming in every week because we get paid on the off fortnight. So basically he'll get paid one fortnight then my, my pay week's the next week and then so on and so forth. Um, so basically what happens is when our pays come in, so I set up a bunch of periodical payments or you might call them standing orders, I'm not sure, transfers, you know that kind of thing. Um, basically automatic transfers that come out of one account which is where the wages go into, they go off into each of the separate accounts. So I'll have you know so much money goes to the electricity bill account so much will go into the gas so much will go into the water that kind of thing and I worked out those amounts from keeping track on this thing so I know how much our bills are pretty much going to cost um and what I do is budget for worst case scenarios okay right. so let's say an electricity bill costs four hundred dollars just for the sake of making easy calculations for myself so an electricity bill is four hundred dollars it comes every two months I've got eight pays within a two month period so each pay I'm going to have to budget for $50 to come out of each pay to go into that electricity account. So at the end of the two months when the new bill comes in, the end of that billing cycle, um, that amount of money will be there ready for me to make a payment. Now this doesn't always work out. Um, sometimes the electricity bill is probably the worst one. Sometimes it comes in way under budget. Sometimes it is way over budget. So when it's under budget, I don't take that money out and go and spend it elsewhere. I leave it there for the next time that I'm under budget. So 
um, over budget, sorry. And that way it tends to equal that. So once all those transfers have gone out into the accounts, there's an amount of money left in our everyday account, which is the account that the wages go into in the first place. The everyday account I use for our food shopping and I use it for just sort of fun shopping, like, you know, the things that I go shopping for and do show in my hauls, that kind of thing. So, um, at least I know that all the bills are taken care of. I also take an amount of savings out and I put that elsewhere. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I always put some savings away because you don't want to get caught off guard with something that comes up completely randomly that's not related to your bills. So I know the sound of having 15 bank accounts sounds expensive and also confusing, but basically what I did is open up accounts that don't have monthly service fees and don't really have transaction fees. All my accounts, you're allowed to have as many e-banking transaction um, transactions as you want without incurring any fees. Like I said, there's no monthly fee. So you check with your bank what you have, but most banks will do something that's I'm sure I can't imagine there'd be any banks that don't have an uh, option like that. And if you do have a bank that has no option, then maybe change banks because they might not be the best bank for you. <laughs> once you get it all set up initially, that part is probably a bit time consuming and difficult. But once you've got it all set up, it will be easy to manage and it will run very smoothly for you, I'm sure. My next topic is debt. So I feel like it's very, very hard to avoid any kind of debt. We have a mortgage, we have a personal loan at the moment for my car, um, and I think that's it at the moment. Yeah, we've never had a credit card, although I do think credit cards work really well in some circumstances where you are using them the correct way and paying them off you know, at the end of each month or very, very quickly. Um, otherwise, they're just a trap for debt. You, know, you don't wanna be just paying off interest for no reason. So number one tip is don't have a credit card, or if you do have one, pay it off as quickly as you can and use it responsibly. Um, number two is pay off that debt. So what I do with our um, with our personal loan, I always make sure I pay off more than the minimum repayments. Um, obviously this isn't always gonna be possible, but if you can, if you can, just do it. Even a matter of $10 a week extra is gonna make a massive difference to how soon you pay off that loan and how much interest that you're inevitably paying if you pay it off sooner. Um, also in our mortgage, we have a redraw available on a mortgage. I think it's something that's pretty standard across most mortgages, but you would need to check with your bank before you do anything um, outrageous because if you can't redraw that money then that's going to be a problem for you later on if you were to do what I do. Um, basically I pay any extra savings money, any extra money I have at the end of every pay. Um, I don't have a savings account, I put that money into our mortgage. So like I said we have a redraw facility so I can get that money back out anytime I want. There's no fees for me to do that because of the way it's set up. Um, again you would want to check that with your bank if you're going to be doing this. Um, basically any money that's, it works like an offset, so any money that is in the mortgage that is extra or whatever. Um, you know, when, when the mortgage is or the bank is calculating your interest that's being paid on that mortgage that month, they will take into account that money that's paid in there that's extra, so you won't get charged as much interest. And therefore, you're going to be saving a hell of a lot in the long run, particularly at the moment with the climate as it is, the financial climate is as it is. Um, a savings account isn't earning very much interest at all, whereas you're still getting charged a whole lot of interest on a loan. So it's something to consider. It's something to talk to your bank about. Make sure you can do it, before, like I say, before um, you do anything because you don't want to pay it all in there and then realize you can't get it back out. That would be terrible. Please don't do that. Oh my God. I do the same thing with our car loan, but not on a greater, as great a scale because the car loan is such a small amount of debt compared to the mortgage. Our mortgage is huge. Um, we are mortgage up to our eyeballs, basically. But the way that I'm organizing it, it feels like we do have a bit of a breathing room because we have all of the savings in the mortgage. My last tip is to keep up to date with everything. So keep up to date with the kind of services that your utilities provide. For example, your mobile phone. You may have signed up for a plan, you know, a year ago and the company might have brought out a new plan that is better, like more suitable for your needs, cost less. That happens all the time. You can generally, I mean, I'm with Vodafone at the moment and basically I chop and change my plan all the time. Even though I'm in a contract for 24 months, as long as I stay with that company, I'm allowed to change the type of plan that I have as often as I want, as far as I'm aware anyway, because that's I, I do it all the time. So basically they will bring out products all the time you just need to keep an eye on it and don't you know just do this every week every few months I sort of go in have a look and make sure that what I've got is still relevant um, I did the same thing with my internet and phone bill again I was locked in for a three-month contract I think it was quite long and I realized that they had changed all their plans and I swapped over and it didn't cost me anything so um, and I ended up on a cheaper plan with a better service so Make sure you do that. If you're opening a statement or something like that, I mean, a lot of people get e-statements these days, but if you are opening some mail from a company, just have a look at the little brochures, the leaflets that are in there because they probably will tell you something about um, a change that the company's made in their products and services so you can always get a better deal. If you are paying bills by direct debit, so it's just happening automatically and you're not paying attention to it, check those bills when they come in by email or whatever. So. You might think to yourself, oh, I don't need to actually look at this bill. I know it's going to just come out automatically. I don't need to worry about it. Have a look at it because sometimes you might real, you might see that there's extra charges or something that you're not aware of. Um, I had a problem with, I think it was my phone bill where they charged me for something that we didn't 
have. So I was, I contacted them and let them know that we didn't have this service, but we in charge for it and they sorted out. We got a credit and it was all great. Another, another um, example was our Foxtel, which if you're in America, Foxtel is our cable company here in Australia. So Foxtel, we've been on this plan. We've been on it for years and years and years. I think when we first moved out, so what, 2009, we've been on the same plan since then, basically, um, which was like the basic package with the sports package. And then, and we had like a really old box unit thing, you know, the, the actual set top box that you use. Um, and then we found out that they'd changed all their product. They had this brand new set top box. It was like a billion times better than the box that we had at the time. Um, and it had been out for months and we wouldn't have realized had I not gone on and checked on the internet that they had this available. So keep up to date with that kind of thing. And I, can, I know it's not the funnest thing in the world to do, but it can save you a lot of money and get you better services in the long run. So that's definitely something to do. Don't just set your direct debits and forget about them. Make sure you know what's going on. Um, so that's all the tips I have on budgeting. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any other questions, please leave them down below and I will answer them. Although I'm not an expert, I'm quite confident in this area of my life. So if you do have any questions, like I said, ask them down below and I will answer them for you as best as I can. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.